Good afternoon and thank you so much for coming. Uh, this is actually a much larger audience than I originally expected, so yeah. Um, so hi, uh, I'm Yunus Chaudhary, I'm from Pakistan. I am uh, the director of Lal Theatre and um, I think I'm sure you already know what the program is about. The first half, the two hours, will be spent on um, the cultural movement that is called Lal. Lal is uh, in a word in Urdu and also in Hindi, and it means red. And I'll be talking about some of the work that we do in Pakistan, and uh, the second half is basically a documentary about a movement which I'll come to at a later point. I think I'll start with a small video to give you an idea of, of what it is that we do. So. Just to give you an idea, I think in Pakistan, VIP uh, tra protocol and whenever, um, you know, personalities and big politicians, when they travel, normally they block out the roads. And this video basically um, shows some of that and be addresses that problem through uh, the music video. But uh, before I talk about uh, Lal as well, I would like to tell you that the poetry, uh, the poetry um, for that song is by the guy, uh, that guy over there. The first one in the picture, that's... Um, that's Fez Ahmed Fez, and uh, he was, he's one of the most famous uh, poets from Pakistan, and the interesting part about him is that he was a communist, and that's not very well known even within Pakistan, even today, but um, he was part, he and some of the other people, the next guy in the picture is Sajjad Zaheer, and uh, then there's Habib Jalib, but the two guys over there, were part of this anti-colonial cultural movement called the Progressive Writers Association, which was very uh, crucial in turning the national discourse against the colonial occupation um, um, of, of, the, of the British. And basically what they did was that they organized writers, um, literary figures, and, and started changing the discourse on aesthetics within the subcontinent. And, uh, and, and what we try to do is basically borrow on that same tradition. And, uh, and the kind of art that we, we, we draw on is called social realism. And it can be basically, um, uh, it, it, it's captured very beautifully by, by, by this one quote from this individual called Munshi Premchand, Premchand when he talks about aesthetics. And it goes something like this. Um, he, he's addressing the artists in, in the subcontinent, and he says that um, if you cannot see the beauty in every drop of sweat that trickles from the brow of a peasant woman who's working in the fields, then you don't know what art is. And, 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 and this is how they basically approach aesthetics, because before that time, in the subcontinent, people normally talked about themes of love, and, and, the normally, and the normal sort of mainstream aesthetic things that people used to focus on. And these guys just changed everything. And, and uh, Habib Jalib uh, was a left leader as well as a very renowned working class, poet of the working class. And uh, so these are the, some of the main figures that we borrow a lot from aesthetically speaking. Okay, so um, I'll be covering the background of the movement, LAL, and, uh, and, and what we do and some of our projects. And, and what our overall basic uh, vision uh, represents. These are some of the projects that, we, the, that LAL has. LAL is a cultural movement that borrows on the tradition of artists that I just mentioned. And it's a very left-wing movement. Uh, we have a theater, we have a band that is the most sort of visible uh, of our projects and whose video you just saw as well. We have a youth group that, that's called LAL Brigade, which is not very active, but it's there. Um, and then uh, we have a... We have a film component, we have a social media component, and we also have a poets collective. And, and before, I, before I talk a bit more about LAL, I think I should also tell you about the crisis of the left in Pakistan. I think that's, uh, and ever since I've been here in Germany as well, I think it's the crisis of the left worldwide. But it's more intense in a country like Pakistan because unlike um, in our neighboring India, which was once a part of the same, same sort of country, um, Left politics has been very hard. I think in Pakistan, when you speak of the left, you don't see them in the mainstream. Um, left, for the most part, has been marginalized. Um, and, and for us, it's been a very big challenge trying to somehow find our way into the mainstream discourse. And, and it's, been, it's been hard because throughout our history, since the 50s, the first ban was imposed on the Communist Party 
uh, in the 50s. And after that, the left had to operate underground and had to suffer repression at the hands of uh, pro-US military governments, which wasn't a very friendly sort of atmosphere to work in, politically speaking. And it's only the last 10 years since the left has started to regroup itself and reorganize and, and start work, working more, once more in the grassroots level, but it's still very small. So that's, that's how we came up with the idea of, of using that rich tradition of culture that was already there and somehow finding our way into the mainstream discourse. And we've managed to do that. And how, I'm just going to tell you. Okay, so in 2007, Pakistan experienced a pro-democracy um, upheaval. It was the lawyers' movement, and it was a very middle-class movement, but the lawyers came out against the government of Musharraf. A Musharraf Pre President General Musharraf was a military dictator in Pakistan from 1999 till 2007, and then he tried to mess with the with the uh, judicial system and, and the chief justice and the lawyer said no. And once that happened, it radically sort of politicized a lot of cross-sections of society, including myself and, and students and, and even trade unionists uh, joined the movement at, at one point as well. So it's one of the biggest upheavals in Pakistan, politically speaking, since the 1960s. Nothing to that of this scale has happened ever since then. So. And, and it resulted in the ouster of the military dictator as well. So, and the left also used this opportunity to bring its uh, discourse to the forefront. And it was during this movement that some of my comrades from the Communist Mazdoor Kisan Party, which is what I'm a member of, uh, started showing up at protests with a guitar and, and, and singing for the, for the lawyers. And, uh, and once this happened, and because there was no cultural expression Culture was literally missing from the movement. There was no cultural expression as far as the movement was concerned. Um, they, were, they were picked up by one of the most sort of, um, one of the biggest channels in Pakistan, which is very right-wing. But because there was nobody else doing the kind of work that we were doing, they offered us an album deal. And, uh, yeah. So, um, and, and, and we basically uh, wrote the anthem of the movement, which was basically... Uh, a poem written by a leader of the lawyers called, uh, his name was Azaz Essen, and it was called Kal Aj or Kal. And, and we coined the, nath and we sang the anthem of the movement, and that was our claim to fame. And the next thing you know, uh, the video that I just showed you was the first video that appeared on the mainstream channel, and all of a sudden, the left had its space. You could see pictures of Ho Chi Minh and Che Guevara and Chu and Lai on, on the, one of the most right-wing TV channels in the country, right? And, <laughs> yeah, so that, that's how we, we realized now we have a space. Okay, so that was the first album. We got a record deal from, from, uh, from, from that channel. And then uh, we also have recent, recently released a second album as well. And, uh, and it's an international album. Uh, one, is, one part is released in Pakistan, and the other part is uh, being released in India with the Times of India record, which is our international distributor. So... So, uh, so the band has now become a very South Asian phenomenon. It's the most visible and one of our first projects. And, um, and it's doing concerts all over the world. In fact, it even came to Germany. It was invited to Frankfurt. It's uh, pretty interesting because they have a large uh, Pakistani expat community. So, so it's kind of nice. Uh, but it's funny because uh, the band gets a lot of reception from India because people there are on the left. And in the mainstream discourse, you don't find any left-wing culture as well. So it's very interesting. And when Lal came out... It's also a very interesting phenomenon. It inspired a lot of other acts to other musicians to take up protest poetry as well. You saw people, for example, I'm sure a lot of you might not know, but like there were small acts like Brigade and, and many others that were inspired by what we did. Okay. Um, uh, so, yeah, these are some of the images of us in action. And, uh, oh, hey, that's... Uh, uh, yeah, we do this a lot. We go... We have... Most of our... Visible concerts are done for mainstream sort of that are visible, but sometimes, uh, in fact, most of the times, uh, the band actually goes to squatters, industrial slums, and performances. This is a mobile concert uh, on the back of a truck, and this is leading a May Day rally. So, um, and and this is at and and at every rally or so, you'll find Lal with its guitar, which is a very working class rally. So, um, and uh, yeah, so. 
so yeah, we, we have a lot of newspaper coverage as well. And at one point, some of our videos, because uh, through the video, music videos and the music as well, we try to address current political issues in Pakistan. So, and some of the channels are not very receptive either at, at some points. Said, OK, look, we're, we're being censored. And it was picked, by, picked up by some of the uh, newspaper channels as well. And uh, I think I'll le leave Lal here and show you another music video. OK, uh, before I show you the video, I'll tell you a bit about this as well. This is a very interesting piece of footage. In Pakistan, there's a very, one of the largest uh, peasant movements in the countries in the south of Punjab. And these are all landless tenants. And uh, these tenants were promised land by the British uh, before the partition, which was in 1947. And they, they were invited by the British to come and till a land which was, at the time, fallow. But after a while, it became fertile, and the army took it over. And uh, it, it converted into military farms, so on and so forth. And, uh, and these guys were never given the land that they were promised. So ever since then, their, their number in millions and they've been in, in, a, in a direct conflict with the Pakistani military. And it's, it's, it's composed of thousands and, and millions of village, uh, peasants in, in villages across South Punjab. And um, this was a rally uh, which went all the way from a place called Okara to, to the provincial capital of Punjab, uh, Lahore. And uh, mounted tractors and, and just went on the roads and... and uh, and wanted to go to the capital. Some, at some points, they were blocked by the, by the provincial administration as well. And this, this concert and this video is basically, uh, the, f the footage is from that rally. So it will be an interesting thing to sort of see as well. Yeah, um, yeah so that was the Anjuman Mazari in Punjab. Um, Okay, and uh, so then uh, later on in 2009 and so, some filmmakers also joined us. So, and this is a poster from a documentary that captured the, the work of the band during the lawyers' movement. This was called Lal March. And some other documentary makers also joined us along the process. One of the documentaries that I'm going to show today in the, la the latter half of the presentation is made by uh, one of those uh, filmmakers. And then we also have... Uh, the, our own in-house film production as well. The videos that we shoot are done by us. We don't hire anybody. So it, it kind of saves us in terms of expenses as well. Um, and then another project by Lal Film is a lecture series on, uh, on, in Urdu. We're trying to um, produce these uh, f uh, coursewares, uh, open, open source free Urdu uh, courses in, in philosophy that can be accessible to, to working class uh, individuals because a lot of the workers that we work with uh, sometimes cannot read. So it's easier for them to either see or, or perhaps hear it in MP3 format. So that's something else that uh, the film uh, makers are doing. And they also do a lot of films on social issues ranging from Bengal workers in Hyderabad to other social movements that, that we're also trying to capture and, and produce through, um, through the filmmaking component. Um, then this is a fairly recent project that we started. It's uh, to do with working class poets, because in Pakistan, you, there are a dime a dozen poets, right? Everybody that you come across will have some kind of a philosophy on life, and some will have an idea of what poetry is, and perhaps even write poetry himself, him, himself as well. And what we, re what we realized was that uh, there were so many unrecognized working class poets who wrote about class oppression and their issues, but it was very hard for them to get published. So we got together and we pulled in our money and we, we got this individual right here, uh, his first book published. And, and his second book is also in the process of being published. And, and we also are supporting some other working class poets as well. And another thing that we're adding to the whole process is that we're recording their, um, their poetry and putting it up on, on YouTube and other social media platforms to make it easily accessible. So I'll give you a sample of, of some of his work as well. Okay. Um, unfortunately, there was not a video version of this with subtitles. But uh, what I have tried to do is to translate from the language, which is Punjabi. This is not Urdu. And, uh, and I hope I can do justice to it. So I'll read a translation of what he just said. His name is Irfan Ali, and the title of the poem is Darna Javi, which means do not be afraid. And basically what he's doing is, 
And he's a, he's a grassroots working class leader and also a member of the Communist Party. So, and, and during the course of our work, what we realize is that uh, a lot of the workers who are working in various uh, textile sectors and in other sectors are very afraid of, of, uh, of organizing or they, they see no point in being politically active because, because they've lost all hope. I mean, they, they find it as a hopeless exercise. And, and this is what he's trying to address through his poetry. And what he says is, my friend, do not be afraid. Do not lose this fight because it is ours to win. They live forever who die for the truth. And please don't die from the fear of death. The oppressor will only be emboldened. Don't you tolerate oppression and cruelty? Even today, stones will not melt. Don't you go home empty-handed. Leaving the truth and your rights behind, don't go, on, don't go ahead and fill the bank walls of the rich. You are alive, my friend. Do not drown like a corpse. Look how my lips are sealed. But Irfan, do not you be silenced. This is what he, um, this is what he was trying to say to his comrades through his poem. And, and I think uh, what we're also trying to do is give a lot of these guys a voice by putting their material on YouTube and by getting them published. And, and there's so many others like him who have perhaps volumes and volumes worth of poetry written, but they don't have any way of getting published. So, so that's something that uh, we feel strongly about, and that's something that we're supporting as well. So that's the working workers' poetry side of it. This is our Facebook page, and uh, it's one of the fastest growing Facebook pages in Pakistan. We have, um, and this is, this is an old figure because I took this snap uh, a couple of, weeks ago, so now it's 280,000 likes. So. And it's a, it's a very interesting new thing that we started doing, actually, um, because nobody in the left is doing this. We realize that media and other, at times, because you're left and you're, your content is very politically charged, sometimes you might not find the media very, very sort of uh, positive towards your content. So, so we created this social movement as well to support our initiatives. And it's, it's taken, a, taken a shape of its own as well. Now we have uh, over 15 moderators who work as volunteers and who, who basically manage our page. And uh, we do everything from online campaigns to sharing content to political memes to, um, to talking about current political issues. And it's a very South Asian page as well because a lot of people from India as well are now part of our moderators and they tend to, um, they're part of the conversation and they're part of the engagement as well. Um, and yeah, so there are about 280,000 likes, and off, out of those 280,000 people, on a weekly basis, we we reach about 180,000 walls, and that's that's a big number for for uh, social media. So, I think at, at any given time during the week, eight to 10,000 people talk about our content. So, what is our content like? Let me give you an example. Know this guy? <laughs> yeah. So um, we try to combine humor with politics, and we. For example, this is like when capitalism takes over. Remember, he's on your side. OK. This is another example of what we do. This is a political meme. Uh, for those of you who are not very active on social media, because I've realized that it's a very German thing, but uh, <laughs> uh, I can't generalize, but still. Uh, memes are like these this small sort of image files which, uh, which address, like, which have everything from humor to politics. So, so this one's about a political issue. For example, recently in Pakistan, this guy um, on the top is like, uh, his name is Imran Khan. He's a leader of um, the second largest party in the country now, which is very popular with the youth because he was also a crit cricketer and he won the World Cup for us and a very famous charity worker too. So he's very popular with the urban intelligentsia and young, young sort of students. So, and, and recently, after the elections, he was the one who proposed that um, we should talk to the Taliban and strike a peace deal with them. And this was our response to him. For example, he's saying, uh, he said that the Taliban should be given a political office. So, so this is me basically addressing that. This is another one from the same, because uh, he, he believes that he has a very different narrative. So, so we attack him as well. So it's, it's not a very, it's a political page, um, the Lal page. I don't know if you guys know about this person, but um, we also did like a campaign, which was a series. Um, we use our page as a means of political education as well. Uh, for a lot of young Pakistanis, they're not familiar with figures from the left. So we did, at one point, we did a campaign series where we educated a lot of users or, or people who are on our page about figures who historically have been with the left. This guy is Bhagat Singh. He was a young guy 
Uh, he was only 23 years old when the British hung him. And at one point, his popularity rivaled that of Gandhi. And he was a communist. He was part of the Hindu Hindustan Socialist Republican Association. And uh, so, so we did a political series where we introduced all these figures from the left, and we keep doing that. And you all know who this is, right? So we've even done a, a series about her. And uh, look, there are like 130 likes and 92 shares, which is kind of cool. Okay, and then we also talk about gender issues, for example. We address, we, we're very vehement on, on gender-related uh, issues in Pakistan. This is something that we also address through our Facebook page. It's, this is another ca campaign that we started. It was a, it's, it's in the process of being built. We have some, um, some graphic designers who work with us, and this is called Lal Canvas. We're trying to invite more and more people to do political art with us, so this is another project that we started. This is another campaign, that uh, sample of a campaign that we did. Shahzeb was this young guy in Karachi who got shot by um, the son of a feudal lord, and because he was from an influential family, so he fled, uh, fled uh, to another country, and uh, people thought for a very long time that there would be no prosecution. So, so to increase the public sort of sentiment and to polarize the public sentiment against the whole sort of uh, feudal system, we also joined in and we brought in our own sort of uh, discourse to the, to the, to the issue. And, and we, we did like a tribute concert for him in, in Karachi and there was a very sort of strong online campaign, campaign as well. That pretty much uh, is all about the social media side of it and I think it's time for another music video. Yeah, so that's, um, that's basically a redoing of the entire narrative of, of, um, from our context, actually. In Pakistan, when you read the history textbooks and the general sort of discourse, national discourse, uh, also about the, um, about the whole Afghan jihad and the Afghan-Soviet experience, is mostly seen within the light of something that was uh, a very good thing, right? Uh, it is normally portrayed as... Um, a, you know, a, a jihad that was that was just that was fought against cruelty and oppression in Afghanistan, and this video basically is saying no, that's not how it was, and it's basically re reintroducing that narrative from a different perspective. And actually, I think that's 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 something that we we managed to do quite successfully, and we keep repeating this narrative through different uh, media as well. Uh, then I think uh, recently as well, Pakistan just had its. Uh, democratic transition and uh, we had uh, for the first time in our history uh, an elected government uh, passed on the reins to another elected government and the left also saw it as an opportunity to participate in the mainstream elections uh, in the in the national elections and the left didn't do very well but uh, that's besides the point uh, i think <laughs> uh, we um, i think during the election we we saw it fit for us to introduce our our narrative into the mainstream i think and that's where lal came in as well we used all our forces in fact the poet that you saw also ran for office from the ticket of the communist party and he didn't win but his campaign was supported by the band it was supported by the theater so for example we did like a video supporting him in, in action and it went on on air as well and that's how we got free media space as well at all his corner meetings my my theater group also went and did its performance i'm coming to the theater group in a bit as well it's it's what i do ah there it is okay so i'll talk about what i do in in the very end this is lal theater uh, this is what i do and uh, this is how I add to the movement as well. In 2009, I was a student, um, and uh, I was also a very convinced communist by then. So I had this college project where I had to do community service for three, three months, and I decided to do street theater and combine, and combine my work um, in the industrial slums where I did a lot of labor activism with theater, which is something I liked. So, so I started doing street theater in the industrial slums of Lahore, and this was the second project that came under LAL. Before that, it was just the band. I was approached by the band, and they asked me to join it, and that's when it became a broad cultural canvas. And then later on, we had film, we had the youth brigade, we had the poetry, so on and so forth. And, and what we do is uh, we train actors that come from these uh, industrial communities, and, and we train them to basically write their own scripts around issues that affect them and their communities, and... And uh, it was a very sort of painful process to first get them to appreciate the fact that they could actually do art because their idea of art was very different. And, and uh, it was a learning process for both me and for them. And um, just to give you an idea of how effective it was, um, for, for about five years before this, I used to 
knock on doors in uh, industrial communities on the outskirts of Lahore from uh, quarter to quarter, go there and uh, just sit down with like 10 workers at a time, talk, at our, talk on for hours about their, about their rights that are there, that are already given to them by the state, but they don't know about it because they're migrant workers, or generally about the kind of conditions that were experiencing, what they were experiencing. And what I realized was that through this medium, I could convert that dry and boring lecture into a five-minute five interactive play, and it would have just as much of a hitting impact. And that's what we started doing, and the impact was just, it just blew us away. It was, it was so powerful that uh, we started getting invites from all, all sorts of places, from working class quarters and villages, and, and you would see my actors appearing out of nowhere into, for example, sometimes a crowded marketplace, and, and they would do a shadow performance and then just disappear. This, is a very, this, this thing is very popular in India, but in Pakistan, theater and culture as a whole hasn't really developed or matured to a point where you would have a lot of uh, street theater groups. Street theater in India, in fact, is so pervasive that it's being used for everything from political parties to homemade tips for diarrhea. But in Pakistan, it's not there. So, so, so we, we are one of the few people who are basically doing this. There are other groups as well, but this is what we do. We're very political. So, uh, so we started doing this, and it's been four years since I've been doing this, and uh, I think I've we managed to train over like 50 actors or something from different communities, and they uh, perform for their communities, they address their community issues as well, but at the same time, we also take on uh, national issues. For example, uh, some of you might have heard about the workers in, in Bangladesh, yes? The, the factory um, workers in Bangladesh, right? We had a similar incident in Pakistan that, that was not very well reported. Um, about 300 workers died in a, in a factory and a fire took place because of bad working conditions and, and a lot of the workers couldn't escape because the, the factory owners, they locked the doors because they wanted, they, they wanted to prevent theft of their, of their uh, goods. So, so the workers ended up dying in the process. And it's a very interesting story for me because I was with my actors and most of my actors are from these work, working class communities. And, and they immediately got, got to work and prepared a play on it and it was so hard hitting that the next performance that we did, it made the entire sort of uh, community cry. I mean, that's just to give you an example of how we address issues. So, so we've been raising our voices against a number of community-based issues, trade union issues, and as well as national political issues. This is not officially part of our, of, our, um, of our theater group, but it's cute, so I thought I'd share it with you. Uh, some of my actors, because they're young, they're in their teenagers, um, they, uh, they, they used to go home and rehearse. And, uh, and their younger brothers and sisters uh, and cousins, they used to see them, and just by looking at them, they got inspired, and they came up with their own play. So, so this is them talking about class issues, for example. We call them Chota Lal, they're not officially part of, Chota means little, little Lal, but they're not officially part of it, but still I think it's cute, so I shared it with you. Uh, this is my team, and uh, yeah, that's uh, I think uh, pretty much it as far as Lal is concerned. Uh, what we want to do, uh, we want to use uh, this, this space that we now have to keep on introducing more and more um, artistic sort of media, for example, we, we might even at some point start like a radio show. We already have a radio show. Uh, we might introduce new media into the entire spectrum. And, and the idea is to keep using this space to get the left discourse across and so that at some point we can eventually build a movement, an actual political movement through this. And I think we're getting there because through our social media, through other me means, we're, we're changing ideas and we're making left ideas and socialism cool, so to speak. And, and, and what, what, is, what is basically our challenge? I think one, one thing that I forgot to mention, that a lot of us who are part of this, this, this uh, activity are, are doing this on a voluntary basis. We don't make any money from it, except for the band, which gets like, paid concerts, but like, that's their thing. But a lot, of, a, lot, a lot of the work that we do is basically done on a volunteer basis. A lot of us have like, day jobs that we do to support ourselves, and then in our spare time, we're doing this. So I think... Uh, one of our limitations is that we need proper structures or support uh, structures that could sort of give our work a more mainstream or uh, a streamlined sort of outlook, so to speak. So that's one of the problems that we are experiencing right now, but I, we hope to change that. I'm working on some projects as well to do that, but more on that at another time.